Welcome back to Taxtron tutorial video series. In our last video, we delved into the basics of Schedule 3, exploring all its columns and understanding how capital gains and losses work. Today, we are going to dive deeper into Schedule 3 with some practical examples to solidify our understanding. Example 1, Reporting Capital Gains. Let's start things off with a very simple example. Meet Milos, a small business owner. Despite selling a capital property after his business's fiscal year end, Milos still needs to report the capital gain on his tax return for that year. Why? Because Milos needs to report the capital gain on his income tax and benefit return for the year 2023, despite the sale taking place after his business's fiscal year end date of June 30th. For our next example, Let's log into web.taxtron.ca. For illustrative purposes, I've already filled in the personal identification details of our taxpayer. His net income is $135,025, and he owes $1,884.34. Let's assume in 2023, the taxpayer sold 400 shares of XYZ Public Corporation of Canada for $6,500. He also paid a $60 commission, and the original purchase price was $6,000. Let's calculate the capital gain or loss on this transaction. To begin, navigate to the profile, step and answer, yes, to the question, did you sell shares or mutual funds? Continue clicking, next, until you reach the, investment, step, where you will find a form named, sale of shares. For this example, answer, no, to the question, are you splitting the income with someone else? You will then encounter the question, is the transaction reported in foreign currency? If the sale amount is in a currency other than CAD, you can specify it here. However, for this example, we will leave it as CAD. If you have additional details such as the date of acquisition, number of shares, or description, you can fill them out. Otherwise, leave them blank. Since the shares were sold for $6,500, the proceeds of disposition will be $6,500. The original purchase price was $4,000, so the adjusted cost base, ACB, will be $4,000. The $60 commission paid will be reported under outlays and expenses. Now, let's calculate the gain. Subtract the ACB, $4,000, and the commission, $60, from the proceeds of disposition, $6,500. The result is a gain of $2,440. To better understand this, you can print the record keeping and navigate to Schedule 3, and go to the section, Publicly Traded Shares, Mutual Fund Units, Deferral of Eligible Small Business Corporation Shares, and Other Shares. Here, you will see that dispositions of shares are reported on lines 13199 and 13200 of Schedule 3. With an applicable rate of 50%, if you scroll down, you will find that you have a $1,220 taxable capital gain, which will be reported on line 12700 of your T1 General. Remember, you only have to pay tax on half of that amount. However, it's important to note that you won't necessarily have to pay the full $1,220 to the CRA. The actual amount you owe depends on your personal tax situation. Let's dive into the second scenario. Suppose the taxpayer borrows money from government securities, treasury bills, on May 1, 2023, for $49,500. It's set to mature in three months, with a maturity value on August 1, 2023, of $50,000. However, they sell it on June 13, 2023, for $49,750. The effective yield rate is 4.05%. Let's calculate the capital gain. Navigate to the step asking, did you sell any other type of property during 2023? and answer, yes, to the question, did you sell bonds? First, let's calculate the interest on the bond. Since the yield rate is 4.05%, multiply the purchase price, $49,500, by the yield rate, 
4.05%, and by the fraction representing the number of days the bond was held divided by the total days in the year, 44 divided by 365. The interest amounts to $241.67. Now, subtract the interest, $241.67, from the proceeds of disposition, $49,750, to get $49,508.33. The adjusted cost base, ACB, remains at $49,500. Therefore, the taxpayer has a capital gain of $8.33, which falls under the section bonds, debentures, promissory notes, crypto assets, and other similar properties, $4.17 of this gain will be taxable income and added to their overall income. Let's tackle the third scenario where the taxpayer sold personal use properties in 2023. First, they bought a boat for $850 and sold it for $1,150. Then, they purchased a computer for $3,230 but sold it for $1,500. Let's calculate the capital gain or loss for these transactions using web.taxtron.ca. Navigate to the step asking, did you sell any other type of property during 2023, and answer, yes. Next, answer, yes, to the question, did you sell personal use property, PUP? Click, next, and enter, boat, in the description. Enter the proceeds of disposition as $1,150 and for the adjusted cost base, ACB, report $1,000. Remember, in the case of personal property disposition, if the ACB is less than $1,000, it's considered $1,000 you will see a capital gain of $150. Now, let's report the disposition of the computer. Click on Add Other Instance and enter Computer in the description. The proceeds of disposition will be $1,500 and the ACB is $3,230. Here, you will see a loss of $1,730. After completing these entries, Print Schedule 3 to understand both the capital gain and loss. You will see the $150 gain reported on line 15800. Remember, if you have a capital loss on the disposition of personal property, you usually cannot deduct that loss when calculating your income for the year. Let's explore the fourth scenario. Suppose the taxpayer has everything the same as the previous example, but this time they also own shares of Bitcoin. Unfortunately, they had to sell their Bitcoin at a loss. They purchased the Bitcoin for $15,070 and sold it for $15,000. After printing Schedule 3, you'll notice a loss of $70 reported on line 15300, and a capital gain of $150 on line 15800. This leaves us with a total gain of just $80. This means you can use the capital net loss of $70 to offset capital gains on your income taxes for the same year. And if there's any left over, you can carry it back to offset gains from the three previous years or forward to offset gains in any future year. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.